the universe extended conclusively, encouraging altogether more prominent size. After this period, it continued to grow, however, at a more sluggish rate, ultimately changing into the universe we notice today. This is the inflationary speculation of the old galactic blast, the most eminent and broadly perceived hypothesis of how the universe began. However, for a few physicists, this head hypothesis doesn't precisely portray the movement of our universe. They suggested that the universe existed before that point, extending on and on into the past as well as into the future. While the universe is extending today, it was contracting before the Big Bang. In this view, the Big Bang isn't so much a bang as a bounce. A subsequent while a contracting universe traded course and began to create once again. As shown by their hypothesis, the universe could skip with the ongoing improvement possibly followed by a breakdown in the far future, then one more bounce. Several physicists proposed the bounce could be unending. This challenges the norm cosmological view where everything started with a Big Bang. The notable physicist Brian Cox also challenges the speculation of how things came to be, declaring that something can't emerge from nothing. Adding to the strain, the James Webb Telescope has made startling revelations clashing with the possibility that the Big Bang connoted the beginning of the universe. These brought up the question, if the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of the universe, then what was? Could the universe eventually start with a skip or something totally different? The probability that the universe had a beginning or a day without a yesterday, as it was initially known, returns to Georges Lemaitre in 1927. While it's an imperfect circumstance to suggest that the universe likely had a beginning, that period of galactic history has little to do with the hot colossal bang that depicted our underlying universe. Yet different space experts and even a minority of experts still stick to the conviction that the Big Bang means the very beginning of everything. All things considered, the definition is obsolete. The Big Bang isn't the presentation of existence as we might be aware of today. In reality, there's much proof highlighting a non-solitary beginning of our universe. We never arrived at those conclusions based on no evident endpoint or high temperatures. Our universe is best described by an inflationary period that happened beforehand. The enormous bang is the result of what happened toward the consummation of advancement. During development, the universe was totally void, no particles, no matter, no photons, just void space. Space itself filled with an immense amount of energy at every location. This energy changed over time, extending in a quick and decided style. As the universe extended, those changes loosened up to larger extensions while new restricted scale changes were made to top them. This superposition of instabilities across scales is a characterizing element of cosmological extension. It would end for arbitrary reasons, not planned. If you lived in an expanding universe, you'd likely encounter nearby areas where augmentation reached a conclusion, or the space among you and them extended emphatically. Briefly, you could attempt to recognize what occurs toward the beginning of a gigantic impact beforehand. That region vanished completely from view at first. It includes a small local region, maybe no more significant than a human-sized hamster ball, but possibly significantly bigger. The energy characteristic of space then gets changed over into matter and radiation. This, this change happens quickly, taking roughly but not instantaneous. As the energy bound up in space itself changes over into particles, antiparticles, photons, and more, the temperature quickly augments from just a few degrees above absolute zero to maybe around 20 Kelvin over the same brief time frame. Because of the giant measure of energy changed, everything moves near the speed of light. All particles act as radiation with significant energy, whether they are massless or massive. This change is known as reheating, marking the end of development and the beginning of the stage known as the hot Big Bang. As development proceeds, you'll witness a significant change from all previous conditions. When the hot Big Bang begins, the expanding universe quickly slows down. After the hidden snapshot of development in an inflationary universe, space expands definitively with extra faraway areas running unendingly. When development ends and the hot Big Bang begins, more distant regions will recede from you to an ever-increasing degree. Gradually, as time progresses, the part of the universe where development ends sees the extension rate drop, while the expanding regions surrounding it see no such drop. Under expansion, the distance to any object would double after a certain period, and when that same amount of time elapses, that distance doubles again, endlessly. 
Once the Big Bang starts, this changes as the expanding universe slows down after the initial moment of development. Before the Big Bang, you'll encounter development cleaning off with neighboring regions. These regions where development ends will fill with matter, antimatter, and radiation, and develop more slowly than the still-growing regions, leaving you in the expanding nearby as a typical locale within spacetime. These regions where hot Big Bangs occur will become isolated from other places where development continues, meaning they will quickly recede from one another's view in the norm inflationary picture. Thus, the development rate changes. There's little chance that any two universes with separate hot Big Bangs will ever interact. The area where we come to dwell gets exceedingly lucky, and expansion reaches a conclusion for us. The energy characteristic of space itself gets changed over to a hot, thick, and nearly uniform ocean of particles, with the primary imperfections and departures from consistency relating to the quantum changes that existed and were loosened up across the universe during development. The positive energy quantum fluctuations correspond initially to over-dense regions, while the negative energy fluctuations get changed over into initially under-dense regions. These serve as the seeds of large structures. We can't see these density fluctuations today as they were when the universe initially went through the hot Big Bang. There are no visual imprints we can access from that early period. The first observable imprint comes from around 380,000 years later, after going through vast affiliations. Nonetheless, we can extrapolate back to understand the initial density fluctuations, finding something consistent with the narrative of galactic development. The temperature fluctuations are engraved on the cosmic microwave background, CMB, providing evidence of how the Big Bang began. However, there are many inconsistencies between the CMB and our current model of cosmology. We're missing something, and these can be summarized in four inconsistencies. First, on incredibly large scales, the universe isn't behaving as expected. The light from the CMB is being lensed by matter between us and the CMB. This means that matter acts like a giant lens, bending and changing the amplitude of the light behind it. The extent of this lensing isn't consistent with our current model, representing a significant challenge for cosmology. Secondly, the two sides of the equator of the CMB sky have different average temperatures, conflicting with the expectation of uniformity in the universe's earliest stag. The assumption that the universe should have started reliably leads to several inconsistencies. Third, the value of the Hubble constant, which describes how fast the universe is expanding, changes depending upon whether we measure it from the cosmic microwave background, CMB, or from neighboring stars. Together, these irregularities suggest we're missing something essential in how we interpret the universe. One proposed solution comes from loop quantum cosmology, which originates from loop quantum gravity. In this framework, gravity itself is made up of particles called quanta, shaping the fabric of existence. In loop quantum cosmology, there's a smallest scale of space, the Planck scale, or 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 35 meters. This implies that the Big Bang couldn't exist in a universe described by this theory. Rather, the universe would never reach an infinitely small dense point close to the Big Bang. In loop quantum cosmology, when the universe was very small, quantum corrections predict a repulsive force causing a bounce instead of a singularity. This suggests that our universe might have originated from a previous universe that contracted and then expanded again, similar to a phoenix rising from the ashes. While the concept of a cosmic bounce isn't entirely new, loop quantum cosmology provides a mathematical framework to support it. Cyclic time, like the idea of a cosmic bounce, is also present in Hindu cosmology, adding further weight to this concept. If loop quantum cosmology is correct, the early universe would have had high energy and density. This condition would alter the CMB, appearing as slight differences in temperature across the sky. These variations, measured through the precise power spectrum, could provide substantial evidence of the universe's origin and support the possibility of a bounce. Overall, loop quantum cosmology offers a compelling alternative to the standard Big Bang model, potentially resolving some of the long-standing inconsistencies in cosmology and providing insights into the origins of the universe. It also offers a promising explanation for the third irregularity, the discrepancy in average temperatures between the two hemispheres of the CMB sky. The structure provided by loop quantum cosmology addresses the first two anomalies found in the CMB, the unusual behavior at large scales and the lensing effect. 
According to Dr. Venkat Govind of the National Institute of Advanced Studies, the possibility that these irregularities are not just measurement errors but originate from quantum gravity effects occurring early in the universe is highly intriguing. To confirm such claims, substantial evidence is required. The idea that the universe began in a cosmic bounce has been proposed before, but its confirmation requires extensive research. Cosmic variance poses a challenge in this view, as our observations may be limited to particular parts of the universe, complicating our understanding. Dr. Dwayne Johnson, a co-author of a significant study and a professor at Penn State University, highlights the difficulty in validating such theories due to the vast diversity. However, the incorporation of new possibilities, like loop quantum cosmology and its extensive implications, holds promise in resolving unique cosmological issues. Despite these advancements, a significant question remains. Did the universe have a beginning at all? Proponents of the universe having a beginning insist that it did, but this raises questions about the nature of the event that started everything. Conversely, cyclic cosmology proposes an eternal universe, continuously undergoing cosmic bounces. However, physicist William Kinney of the University at Buffalo identifies a critical flaw in this idea. Entropy. The measure of disorder in a system increases with each cosmic bounce leading to a continuous depletion of usable energy. This entropy growth implies a beginning, like a Big Bang, conflicting with the idea of an eternal universe. While new cyclic models attempt to address this issue by including expansive phases between bounces to dissipate entropy, Kinney's research suggests that the universe likely had a specific beginning. Kinney's findings highlight the ongoing debate over cyclic universes, prompting further investigation into their feasibility. However, proponents of cyclic universes have yet to address this criticism fully. The scientific conversation about this topic continues to evolve, driven by the quest to determine the universe's origins and its ultimate fate. Quantum cosmology and cyclic models, which propose various mechanisms to address anomalies, have sparked interest among cosmologists. Nelson Dos Santos of the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, who has delved into bouncing and cyclic models, notes that while loop quantum cosmology's bounces address CMB anomalies, they may no longer be useful. Still, he remains confident in the possibility of a cyclic universe. According to Nelson, the existence of the universe is certain, making a cyclic universe, perpetually existing, seem more plausible than one created at a specific moment. As a scientist, he remains open to exploring both possibilities. While the beginning of our universe remains a mystery, there has been intense discussion about its ultimate fate. The fate of the universe depends on its composition, including dark energy and matter, determining its future. Essentially, there are two primary scenarios, endless expansion or contraction. In one scenario, the universe expands indefinitely, with stars eventually exhausting their fuel, leaving behind stellar remnants like white dwarfs and black holes. However, the fate of the universe depends on the nature of dark energy, a mysterious force driving the universe's expansion. If dark energy remains constant, the universe's expansion accelerates, leading to a cold, dark, big freeze as matter disperses and entropy increases. Alternatively, if there is enough matter, the universe's expansion may slow and reverse into contraction. This scenario leads to the possibility of a cyclic universe model where the universe undergoes cycles of expansion and contraction, never reaching infinite density or a specific beginning. Each cycle marks the start of a new era of existence, offering a somewhat reassuring perspective compared to a cold, dark demise. Regardless of the universe's fate, our presence at this precise moment is remarkable. It signifies our unique position in the universe and the critical role of understanding in contemplating the universe's vastness and its inevitable certainty. As we ponder the universe's nature, we are compelled to consider the meaning of our existence and the transient nature of time itself. Thank you for listening to this episode. Your support drives us to deliver quality content, and we appreciate your feedback on today's topic. Stay tuned for future episodes by subscribing and spreading the word. Until next time, keep exploring the mysteries of the universe.